Good evening, everyone. Hi, welcome to Deborah's Quiet Corner. I'm just coming on this evening. Um, I have some um, original ginger honey crystal. And what you do is you put this into hot water, which I have a cup here. I'm gonna just sip on this while we talk tonight. And you dissolve this into the hot water. And it's uh, Prince of Peace Original. Prince of Peace Original Ginger Honey Crystals. And this stuff is like so potent. Like if you have a scratchy throat or, you know, you feel like you might be getting a little sick or something, you just buy this and add it into about 16 ounces of water, hot water, and then it'll crystallize and you stir it. And uh, I'm going to use my teeth to open it. Tear the package. And I'm going to pour the crystals in. See the crystals going in. Just honey and ginger. Pure honey and ginger. And I mean, you can taste the ginger going down your throat. So I'm going to sip with this. And we just want to talk about some current events tonight. Uh, stuff that's happening. Um, stuff you may already be aware of, you may not be aware of. We just go over some of the things that has been happening recently in the news. Um, I just want to go back and um, let everyone know um, I was planning to do the diary um, as a live, but after studying the um, YouTube guidelines, I understand that that can't happen right now. And it's all good because I've been still, you know, keeping stuff in my diary and recording. I would like to have done it more collectively, but later on down the road, we still can go back and do it. But I know right now that's not gonna be feasible. So um, I spoke to all of my close friends, explained the guidelines of the YouTube um, guidelines of what you have to do in order to have a live um, segment on YouTube and everybody was cool. Nobody lost their cool or anything over it. And uh, those that purchased their uh, diary said that they've been, you know, keeping stuff in there um, of their own. And um, so it didn't really cause a problem. It's not like something we started and then we had to stop because, you know, the YouTube guidelines, I wasn't in compliance uh, with those guidelines. So as you do this longer, you do, you know, look into things a little closer and you do get a better understanding of what it is that's required um, to come on here and do certain things. And you want to be, you know, within the guidelines and you want to stay, um, you know, in those guidelines and uh, be compliant to what their rules are. So we'll do that later. It's nothing, you know, major. Uh, I still love my diary. I still go in it. I think the pages are great. And uh, like I said, maybe down the road somewhere, we can go back and uh, do that and do the um, diary journals together. So I just wanted to come back on and clarify that first. Um, uh, because as you do this, you get a better understanding of what the guidelines are. When you just come on, you just, you know, you're on here. So, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. So now that I do know, I can uh, come back to this later and uh, we can uh, pick that up. So uh, I think the first thing I'm going to talk on uh, uh, current events is the Donald Trump uh, brother, uh, Robert Trump. Um, he was his younger brother. He was 71 years old and he passed and uh, it hit the news and Donald hasn't really been saying too much about why, what was the causes of his brother's uh, passing away. And I looked into it um, on a personal level to see if I could get any information. I couldn't really find out like why, what was the diagnosis of his decease. Um, so I guess we have to watch the news for that and uh, be updated with that as they put more out. You know, he's gonna probably keep it as private as possible because really anything that goes on in his private life, unless the media gets hold of it, we don't get to hear about it anyway, so. Um, but his brother was previously in the hospital in June and he had a um, disclosure medical condition 
back in June, and they did not tell us what was going on with him then. So, you know, he's been sick for a while, June, July, August. We're in August now, and he just passed away in August. So um, he's been sick for a while, but they have not yet disclosed what was the medical condition that um, Robert Trump, and him and Donald was real close, so I know he's um, human, so he's feeling the effects of that. So those that weren't aware of it, yes, that happened. I know everybody's not crazy about Donald Trump, but that is current the news. And CNN uh, posted the um, information about him being sick back in June uh, with a disclosed uh, illness back in June. So. Nobody really even knew why he was in the hospital back in June. So he just never recovered, uh, apparently, from whatever was going on in June. And it just took him into August, and it took his life. So, like I said, if we monitor the news, which is that's not good news, we'll be able to find out more. Um, we're going to go into the subject of uh, why are people in such a denial with the um, pandemic? Um, some people are really in denial. Some people will tell you to your face that there's no such thing and um, they don't know why they're keeping this going and um, uh, why do they keep telling everybody they need to wear a mask and that's a big subject now in the media, um, you know, the concerns about keeping the mask on and um, that there, it really is a pandemic and that people need to comply with the guidelines that are put in place not just for yourself, but so that everybody else could be safe. And um, a lot of reasons why a lot of people um, are in denial is just because it's a coping skill. Like, if you deny something, you can you kind of cope with it better. Like, no, nah, that's not really what's going on. Like, they're just trying to scare us. Like, why do they want us to keep wearing these masks? And, you know, people, you meet people in the public and they really just don't um, really feel as though there is a pandemic. Now, we see the numbers going up every day on the news. Um, so, not to deal with it as a coping skill, a coping mechanism, they'll say that there is no pandemic. And then people just don't want to wear the mask. A lot of people just do not want to wear a mask. It's like you have to use maybe reverse psychology and say, we don't want nobody to put no mask on. And then you'll probably get everybody, <laughs> everybody will want to put a mask on because they've been told um, that they're not supposed to have a mask on. It's just being told what to do. And we don't live in a society where we like to be told what we can and cannot do. It's just like when we were told to stay inside, that was so hard for everybody because we didn't want nobody telling us, you know, putting no restrictions on us because we just so used to moving and doing like we want. So. There is pandemic. People are in denial. You're going to meet people once in a while that's not going to have a mask on. You're going to come close to them or face to face with them. And you just have to do what you have to do to guard yourself, keep yourself safe. Another thing that's big in the news now is um, what are we going to do with the children as they go back into the schools and have lunch time? They're going to have to go and have lunch and you can't have them in school all day. They have to have a lunch break. So a big concern now is that um, what do we do with the COVID-19 when the students go back to school? Some students are already back in school. Um, some students will eat lunch in a cafeteria. So they'll probably put those little sticky things on the floor to keep everything separated so that, you know, you keep in the distance at least. But what are you going to do with these little small kids that's going to be taking their masks off? And you got to take the mask down to chew. You got to take the mask down to drink. Um, um, and the school systems are losing millions of dollars because they are trying to feed the hungry kids that have not been in school. So they're losing a lot of funding because now you have all these children out of school that may be in a situation where they don't have a breakfast and they don't get a lunch. So the schools are trying to support these children while the schools are closed. So they're losing funding. I mean, they're losing big millions of dollars trying to feed 
the children that are out of school for this long period of time to make sure that they are getting something to eat, a breakfast and a lunch. So um, if this continues, the school's money and funds, they could be broke by early fall, which is right around the corner because we're just getting ready to go out of August. Uh, then September's coming in. Then we have that last holiday, summer holiday. And then everybody's got to decide what they're going to do with the kids, with school, and things like that. So it's just so much going on right now. And um, Donald Trump was saying that maybe since the parents are taking care of the children at home, <clears throat> excuse me, they should get paid. With the teachers are getting paid the salaries. Which I'm glad, I know that the parents are probably so happy to hear that because if they're going to be homeschooling their children and they're willing to pay them, that's like a plus because they're going to be home anyway. So if they get it set up where you homeschool your children and you get the funding for it, that, <laughs> trust me, that is going to be great for the parents that are home homeschooling their children um, that can't go out and, um, you know, um, they can't really go out and work now because the small children are home. So what are you going to do with the small children? So Donald Trump mentioned something. Well, if they can't go to school, and we're not going to be paying the schools, let's just give the parents the money. I think that's a plus, don't you? <laughs> I think that's fabulous. I think they should get paid. I think mothers should get paid a check anyway, all that they have to do, whether they homeschool or not. I think they should always be considered to get something. Okay, so we're going to talk about the postal services. Now, <clears throat> they're asking for funding for the postal services um, to keep stuff processed and to keep the stuff moving because we're going to have to do a lot of uh, voting from home to the mail. So it's going to have to go through the mail and to secure that it goes through there good, we're going to have to have these machines that um, are high speed so that they can process all of the stuff that's going to be coming through for, through the, for the voting uh, that's about to take place. And then these machines have to be able to sort the mail, they, um, and they have to be set up nationwide so that this process of uh, mail-in ballots won't be um, fraudulently um, processed through the system. So um, they are estimating that it will cost $21.4 million um, per hour to keep up with the capacity capacity that they need um, to get everything into the system so that the ballots can be read properly. So Donald Trump is saying that he don't want to fund these post offices to have these machines where they can watch and monitor what's going on and get the um, ballots in that need to go in for the election that's coming up. So. Um, <clears throat> They're saying that they want to have a demanding, they're demanding an urgent meeting with top officials because they want to uh, testify about the urgency of having these um, machines, sorting machines nationwide uh, that's through the Postal Service to help with this. Uh, it's going to be a lot of um, mail-in ballots uh, for this election and 